All right, my friends, I've been waiting for you on this one. Got my notes ready for you. We are going to be working ourselves through a full 4K timeline here, not just clips, but a full 4K timeline from soup to nuts. And this M1 Mac is bonkers. Let's go. What is going on, you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And yes, today what we're gonna be doing is working our way through a full 4K timeline over 15 minutes here where I have cut and corrected and done all kinds of things. I'm gonna walk you through it, but I've already done it. The one thing that I haven't done is I haven't gone to the final render to get it ready for YouTube. Now, for those of you who know me, been around the channel, you know I've got the 16 gigs of RAM on that Mac mini. I also have the one terabyte of internal storage, but remember I did that video. I did that video on editing on an external SSD because I think many of you will be doing that. Well, that's the deal. Raw footage, the bundle, the library, everything is on the SSD, not this SSD, the one that's plugged in right now because we're gonna get into it. So I just, I just kind of wanted to level that out for you because I think a lot of you will be editing off of that SSD. And again, that video, I will link that up that I did. But what we're gonna be doing, going back to Josh Yo and Imaging Resource as far as their Sony A7S III footage. And we are talking 4K timeline here. We're talking 422 10-bit 4K here. We also have some 420 8-bit XAVC and HEVC, so H.264 and H.265 footage. And what I will tell you is it has been a joy to work with. I, I did a little behind the scenes of me editing. This isn't an editing tutorial or anything like that, so just wanna be clear. And what I will tell you is it has been great adding all of these effects and transitions. You know, like when you're doing, even in Final Cut Pro, which is completely optimized for the Mac, obviously, and you know, like when you're working that timeline, you're starting to add things, titles, transitions, and you're still trying to scrub through the timeline and all of a sudden things just get, you know, like hung up and you can't, you just got to wait for it. The beach ball, not on this one. So here's the deal. We're going to set the cameras up. We're not going to do any screen recording. I'm going to walk you through it. We're going to get to the final render together. I don't even know what it's going to be, but we're going to do it together. So let's set it up and get you in. All right, friends, we're here in Final Cut. I have this in front, so I've moved everything over so that we could actually see the, the playback, the display here. And just to let you know, scrubbing through all of this. And I have a 15 minute, 37 second timeline here. Also too, it is 4K, most of it is 10 bit, some 8 bit, just a couple of clips. And then I did have to add, just so that I could get over 15 minutes, I did add a couple 1080p clips. You're seeing this through the camera on the monitor and then compressed in YouTube. So it is definitely not um, as you would probably see it, this final timeline. And so what I wanted to do is I definitely worked with every clip, trying to correct it and working with the exposure and going in for stabilization in certain clips. I even added a draw mask um, for some hue adjustments on some skin tones. I even did some noise reduction on some of them. And I also added, uh, so an adjustment layer here, which actually has a LUT for these clips here. I added another adjustment layer on top of that. I have third-party plugins for some, some titles and transitions that actually worked really well. So um, from Pixel Film Studio, not all of them work well, but the ones I'm using obviously do. And then went over here, another adjustment layer with a different LUT and then an adjustment layer on top of that with more titles and transitions in these clips. I have the, the track down here, so the audio track, so the, the, the music track. And so didn't do any complex like sound design or anything like that, but this is a working 15 minute plus 4K timeline. And what we're gonna be doing is rendering it for YouTube at 4K on the external SSD, I haven't done it yet, so I don't know what to expect, but just kind of didn't want to run you through this, let you know too that it was just amazing to be able to add all of these transitions and stabilization and noise reduction and still be able to play back the clips, scrub through the timeline without any issues. So you're here to see what the render is gonna be like, so let's actually just get into it. So let's get that timer going and let's see what happens. Figured we'd sit down and have a little chat. All right, so that was on the external, and yeah, I went ahead and did you a favor and did it on the internal in case you wanted to compare. We'll talk about that in a sec. 
But as you saw on the external, with all that footage, you saw what I did to it. I threw as much correction grade, LUTs, transitions as I could and working with it, just working with it alone. Let's, let's actually talk about that for a second because typically you would have to work in proxies with this type of footage. I, I just wanna reiterate that. You would actually have to go to a ProRes proxy file in Final Cut Pro to even be able to, to put it in your timeline and scrub through the timeline. I just need to emphasize that. I just, you know, I'm trying not to get too excited about it. It's just that I've never been able to work with footage like that so easily. And I just need to reiterate, but at 15 minutes and three seconds to render that 15 plus minute timeline and going into the SSD, as far as the external render, the temperatures, those reached 49.1 degrees Celsius, which translates to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is interesting because, I, you know, I think it can go higher, but, you know, I wonder if there's a little bit of throttling that occurs, but obviously there's still going to be some bottleneck there because we know that the, the Thunderbolt 3, it's not, it's, Thunder, it's Thunderbolt 3 compatible, but it is not a Thunderbolt 3 uh, drive itself, like a, a true NVMe that is in a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. Again, testing still to, uh, <laughs> to, to continue. Now, the Mini itself, um, 32.6 degrees Celsius, 90.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, going back to the drive itself, as far as the peak read and write, 124 on that read and the right was around 317 as far as the peak is concerned going up and down uh, but as i said you know there's going to be some fluctuation as it's reading and writing that's the whole thing when you run these synthetic benchmarks and getting higher read and write speeds that's one thing but when you're working with these drives that's obviously another that's why i do these tests for you now moving down to the internal and of course you know it's exciting sure but moving down to the internal, five minutes and 35 seconds for that same, I removed all of the render files, started all over again, put it all on the internal drive, moved everything over, five minutes, 35 seconds. And of course, again, you're gonna get that efficiency with using that drive uh, in the computer. Now, the read and write was the read for 301 megabytes per second and going as high as 572 megabytes per second. So just, you know, keep that in mind because there's no bottleneck trying to go through a Thunderbolt 3 port. Now the SSD temp was at 102 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and 38.8 Celsius. So the mini just still hovered around 32.3 uh, degrees Celsius. I mean, not much going on there. The heavy lifting, so there was definitely some swap between the CPU, but the GPU doing a lot of that lifting and seeming to be fairly efficient. Like I said, throwing all of the color grade, the correction, the LUTs, the transitions, um, all of that, and being able to work with it, still scrubbing through the timeline, I, I'm, I'm still amazed. And so I will continue to do these tests for you. I'm sure plenty of you out there, whether you are someone who has a Sony a7S III, thinking about the M1, you already have the M1 and you know, or someone like yourself that you're thinking like, I wanna upgrade my camera, I wanna upgrade my gear, but making sure that you have a computer that is going to be able to transcode that, to be able to work with that. Just keep that in mind, because that's obviously a, an, an additional expense. And of course, just wanted to reiterate, for those of you that are looking at the M1 in your workflow, Always making sure that your NLE, your editors are going to work well. Final Cut Pro, obviously optimized. Um, I, I know a few DaVinci users out there that are doing quite well. Adobe, yes and no, it, it just really depends, um, especially with After Effects. So that's still being tested, but hey, do your research. I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the research for you here, doing the testing as much as I possibly can. So anyway, I gotta get out on this one. Gotta go do some other testing, do some other things. Find me out there on Twitter. Hit me up in the comment section below. You go out there and do those things that matter. You keep rocking those faces. I really appreciate your time and attention on this one. You go do the things. And I'll catch you right back here on the next one.